Hello, students. Good day. I am Teacher Alvin, and welcome to our online class. Today, I will be teaching science. Before we proceed in our main topic for today, we're going to start first with our vocabulary. Our first vocabulary word is breed, breed, breed. Now, let's spell the word breed. It's B. R E A T H E Breed Great job Our second vocabulary word is Evaporation 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 Now Let's spell the word evaporation. It's E V A P O R A T I O N. Evaporation. Great job. Our third vocabulary word is condensation 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 now let's spell the word condensation it's c o n d e n s a t Condensation. Very good. Now, let's proceed with our lesson proper. Our topic for today is Why is the sun important? Again, why is the sun important? The sun is important to all the life on earth. It means all the living things like plants, animals, and as the humans, we need the sun to survive and to live. The sun is the primary source of energy on earth because the sun gives us light energy and heat energy. Sunlight is one of the important elements needed by plants in order to grow. They use the sun's energy to make food through a process called photosynthesis. This energy is then transferred to you when you eat the plants. This also happens when we eat meat from animals. The energy that the animals consume from the plants that they have eaten remained in their bodies and when we eat them this would finally end up in our body so without the sun there is no plants there is no animals and there is no humans and there will be no life on earth we use the sun's energy as an alternative to the non-renewable energy sources the sun makes rain 
the heat from the sun makes some of the water in the oceans go up in the air and form clouds. The clouds then move around and change into rain. This is what we call the water cycle. And for us to understand this, I prepare a short video for us to watch. Water cycle. Now, let's learn more about it. When the sun warms the water on the Earth's surface, it evaporates, converting itself into water vapor or steam. And it begins its incredible journey, flying into the sky, up towards the atmosphere. This first stage of its journey is known as evaporation. When the water converts in vapor, it rises towards the atmosphere, then cools down, transforming itself into clouds. This second stage of its journey is called condensation. Once the water has condensated and turned into a cloud, it continues its amazing journey by being blown by the wind, traveling from one place to another. Clouds are actually tiny little drops of water suspended in the air. But when the clouds grow, they collect more and more water. These water drops then crash into each other and become bigger drops of water. Then, at some point, they will end up falling to the ground in the form of rain or even snow. This stage of the water cycle is called precipitation. The water which falls to the ground, which precipitates in the form of either rain or snow, may land in rivers or even on the ground to then seep through to subterranean currents of water. All this water must continue its long journey, covering vast amount of distances until it finally reaches the sea. When it arrives at the big blue sea, it will once again begin the process evaporation, condensation, precipitation. That is why it's called the water cycle, because it forms a never-ending circle. Isn't the water just so incredible? Well, that's it for now. Now, let's do our wrap-up. What are the two forms of energy that the sun give to us do you have any idea if your answers are light energy and heat energy your answers are correct very good number what do we call the process of turning from liquid into vapor? Do you have any idea? If your answer is evaporation, your answer is correct. Very good. Thank you for listening. Hope you learned something new today and again this is teacher alvin and see you again next meeting bye bye